All right. Well, welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm doing this different today. Um, I was pretty sure that Facebook locked me out personally <laughs> about two hours ago. And then it turns out it was the whole world. So it wasn't personal after all, which was a little bit disappointing. I was sort of excited that I'd, you know, been controversial enough to be pinned out by Facebook like this woman. Anyway, didn't happen. But what's really cool is we are doing this on Zoom today, and I'm doing it as a Zoom meeting. I've done it as a webinar before, which is sort of safe. You know, nobody gets to unmute themselves on a webinar. But I was like, let's do a meeting this time, and if you want to unmute yourself, you can. Um, and yeah, too much, there's too much profanity in my videos. I got locked out. That's it. She's shut down. She says fuck too much. <laughs> Although Liga and I do have some challenges boosting my videos through Facebook marketing because of my profanity. So there's that. Um, so I, uh, the, the topic this week is, is, was tongue in cheek, meaning um, I, I think I, well, I have to always look what I called it. Oh, getting serious about consciousness, the pathway to success. <laughs> and um, this, this topic actually came out of, um, a conversation or multiple conversations with a friend of mine who is really trying, and I say trying, to change his reality with money. And he's trying to do it quickly. Hi, Janique. Um, and so it was, so, you know, I've just, we've just been going back and forth and I'll shoot him a question here and there. And, you know, we're friends. So fine, blah, 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 thing and thing. And then finally I was like, you know, you should keep letting this be really serious. And he really didn't get it at first because it was very serious to him. Like to him, not having the money that he required was like, this was serious. What, is, what was I talking about? Like, not, of course it was serious. We're talking about money here, people. <laughs> and the thing was that in the rest of his life, um, he was really fun. But then he started looking at money and he got really unfun. And I find that this happens a lot with a lot of us that are desiring to change something in our life. And this whole month is like being a great facilitator of yourself month, really. I'm about to launch a class. I haven't gotten it out yet. <laughs> um, but I love this conversation of how do you be a great facilitator of yourself? What are all the different facets to being a great facilitator of yourself? And one of them that I have found has been one of my best tools is humor. When I don't let myself have my sense of humor about anything, and on the days when nothing is funny, nothing changes. On the days when my limitations actually are some of the funniest things that I've ever discovered, they just melt just like that. And so I've learned to really let myself begin to play with um, something like if I want to change something, I'm like, well, how can I play with this in a different way? Now play in the very beginning of my journey with, with access, actually play as a concept in my life was only a concept. And it wasn't something that I felt like I knew how to do, which is funny because it is actually kind of my natural state. Um, and I find that with a lot of people that I facilitate with, they actually have tremendous senses of humor until they find something in themselves that they think is wrong. And then it's not funny anymore. <laughs> now I'm not funny. Now I'm actually, I'm actually truly and seriously fucked up. And I need to change this because I'm fucked up, right? And that energy that you begin being with the thing you think is so fucked up about you actually sticks that fucker in place. There ain't no change in it because now you've judged it. Now you're being all serious about it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And I'm inviting you guys to throw me your situations. What is it that you haven't been able to change? And I've got a few right now. And we're going to play with those today. And then I just would love for you to, if, as you're listening to this, look at, is there any part of my life right now that I'm being really fucking serious about? <laughs> you know, is, have I made, um, have I made my body a problem? Have I made my money reality a problem? Have I made no people coming to my classes a problem? Right? Like, what is it that I've had? Cause you can only make, if it's, it's, if it's a problem, it's serious. So this is a serious problem. If it's like ice cream, it's not that serious, right? So where are you making your, the things that you would like to change into a problem? And if they could just be something that you're choosing, and maybe it's a little lame right now, or you could choose something greater, would that make it any easier to change? Um, so this, this whole conversation is in and around, just so you know, one of the 10 keys to total freedom, which goes like this, no form no structure, 
no significance. And significance was one of those things that I did so well. I do significance so well. Facebook shut me out. <laughs> Not, I wonder what happened to Facebook. I wonder if it went down for the whole world. No, Facebook shut me out. Hello. So now I've got to rearrange all this. Like I can do significance at the drop of a hat. <laughs> oh my God, I just got a text from this guy. I wonder, I wonder, he totally, he's in love with me. I know he's in love with me. You know? <laughs> I mean, I could just take any one thing and make it really, really significant. And so this is something that um, I had to keep recognizing in myself. And this is how you be a great facilitator of yourself is you just start recognizing what your tendencies are. Okay. So one of the first um, tools that you can begin to use with anything is everything that I'm unwilling to perceive, know, be, or receive about what I'm creating here. I destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. And um, that's the clearing statement for those of you guys that are watching this for the first time. And you can find more about that on theclearingstatement.com. And um, okay, so let me dive into your questions here. So one of the first questions was, Let's see here. Does suffering create significance or is it the other way around? I love that question actually. Does suffering create significance or is it the other way around? Is the significance create suffering? <laughs> That's actually a brilliant question, Vivian. Thank you. So is actually significance create suffering? Because if you, if you don't make anything significant, can you actually have suffering? If it's not significant that they didn't call, if it's not significant that nobody showed up to your class, if it's not significant, if the shape of your body isn't significant, if it's not significant that your parents do or don't support you in the way that you'd like them to, is that, if that's not significant, if your children not doing what they should do, if that's not significant, if everything is truly, truly, truly an interesting point of view and not significant, can you actually have suffering? So you start to look at that and you're like, wow, am I committed to significant? Am I committed? I might be committed to significance here. I actually might be committed to making everything like pfft, way, 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 way bigger and more problem laden than it actually is. And if nothing's actually significant, then guess what you always have? Choice. You just, you just have another choice. It's like, oh, well, this isn't significant. I've made it significant. It has a lot of charge in my world. And then this is where you look at, okay, I'm making this significant. And now, so this was one of the things that I said, I don't know who I was talking to today, but I'm like, one of the first gifts you can give yourself is recognizing that every single thing you do, including significance, is a choice. That's one of the first empowering things that you can begin to acknowledge. I'm choosing to make this significant right now. That's really funny. <laughs> Once you start acknowledging that things are choices, they start to be funnier. Because you're like, I'm really, like, I'm, I'm really choosing this right now. Like, I'm in it. I'm in it. We're in the thing. It's very pain, very painful. I'm doing the thing, and I'm doing it loud, right? Then it, I mean, that's when you start to invite humor into your, into your world. And guess what? With humor, it can all start to kind of go, well, well, this is pretty funny. So is there, do I have any other choices here? I notice that when I make something very significant, I can't use demand energy to change it. Yeah. Well, you've already demanded of yourself that you are making it significant. So you're already doing the thing. So you can't counter intend yourself. You're like, your art, all of your energy is going into the creation of significance. So demanding that your, yourself is like, what do you mean? We're doing this thing right now. We, this thing doesn't match this thing. I'm already very committed to making this significant. Why would I change it? This is really working for me. Shut up. Stop. <laughs> That's actually how that works. So, um, so when you look at anything that's not changing, you can also look at, well, how significant have I made this? And this was one of the things that I said to my friend. I was like, how significant is this to you right now? He's like, very significant. It's very significant. He's like, if I, have, if I don't create the money, then I'm not going to have a home. And I was like, first of all, it was the beginning of the month. So we have a whole month still. And I, I said, would you ever like not, he has a little son. And I was like, would you ever not have a home for you and your son ever? <laughs> Truth. He's like, no. I was like, are you more capable than you're actually letting yourself be right now? Truth. Yes. If you were willing to just let yourself be, 
is there a chance that you might actually come up with way more ideas than if you made this into a trauma and drama and a significance? Yes. I was like, well, then don't have any fun with it because money might show up. <laughs> so he started having fun with it and money started showing up. And literally that is exactly how simple changing things is. So let's go on to the next thing here. So I have another question. I would like to unstick from not creating my own classes. After Maestro, I'm better with the technical part and I use it for creating other facilitators' classes, but I still don't put my classes as a priority. What is that? And then I'm working like heck with the written translations requests. Um, the written translation request floods in and all the urgency. I sleep only a few hours a day, kind of doing whatever it takes at the same time. Most of the work I did did not really make me money. What is that? Cool. So I've, I, I mean, with, with every single thing that's showing up in my life right now, I, I've really been asking myself the question, like, what am I truly committed to here? What am I truly committed to here? The only things that show up in your life are the things that you're committed to. That's it. So when you, so the significance is a great example of that. When you are committed to significance, everything, you can use everything then to create significance. So this table that this laptop is sitting on can be a, a, a reason and a justification to be significant. This light in front of me will be a reason and a justification to be significant. It's very significant that I have a light on me. It's very significant that I need a light on me. It's very, I'm just like, everything becomes the reason and the justification when you're committed to something. So like if you're committed to judging yourself, every single thing that comes into your path will be something you can judge yourself with. Uh, I had, I told this story in a couple of my foundation classes recently, but we had this girl, this lady that was asking a lot of questions in the class, but we really couldn't get anywhere with her. And it was so interesting because she was asking a question, but she wasn't really asking a question. And every single thing that we would contribute to her, she turned around and like stabbed herself with it. And so finally on day four, and I was like, is there any chance that you're committed to judging yourself? She was like, holy shit what's true for you makes you lighter, right? She was like, holy shit, that's so light. And I was like, yeah, I said, cause it's really interesting cause every single, we can't actually get anywhere with what you're asking. Cause you take it and you turn it around, you, you use a tool and you just stab yourself with it. And um, so that one awareness started unraveling all the ways of functioning that she'd had created over the last 30 years. She's like, I've been committed to judging myself forever. And I was like, I get it. Some of these things we've been committed to, we've never even looked at or acknowledged. So one of my questions with this particular thing is, is, is to just ask yourself like, hey, what am I really committed to here? Am I committed to succeeding with money? What is success with money to me anyway? Am I committed to um, using money to judge myself? Am I committed to creating my classes? It looks like in this, particular example. No. Cool. Um, what am I committed to here? Am I committed to everybody else? Yes. Okay. Is that currently creating everything that I'd like to have in my life? No. Cool. And so Gary's question to all of us is just, well, how's that working? How is it working? Because something like that might really, really be working for a while right? Like it's working in all these different ways. I get validation. I feel welcomed. I'm in a thing. I'm a part of a team. I'm needed. I'm required. I like feeling that way. If I let that go, I'm not actually sure that I really want to do anything else. I'm not really doing anything else anyway. So I would have nothing. All of these points of view that come up that are creating the choice that's showing up, right? So there's all these other things that I'm actually committed to. Um, yeah, I keep creating for others like they are more valuable, more powerful, and more knowledgeable than me. Cool. And you may just have to go, well, maybe they are. Maybe I'm just pathetic and weak. Because some of the stuff that you've been stuck on for a long time, right, is some of the stuff you're going to have to trick yourself into a different choice. Really, there's always just a different choice available, right? I could just choose in this next second, well, I'm going to play with what if, what if I was the most valuable thing? I'm just going to play with that. You could choose that. You won't choose it and that's okay. And you won't choose it because of something. What's your because? 
And so sometimes you have to go the other way around to trick yourself and go, well, they are more valuable than me. They're more knowledgeable than me. What if that's all true? And just be with that. You've bought it. You're resisting it, which is holding it in place. So it's with you all the time. It's where you're functioning from. We don't know yet if it's true, but we can't even ask that yet because we haven't been willing to just be an allowance of it. Maybe it's just true. Maybe they are more powerful than you. Maybe all you're destined to be is a translator. It's your destiny. It's fate. How does that sit with you? Right now, that's what you're choosing. Acknowledging that you're choosing it would, might be a great start of like, I am choosing. I choose to make everybody more valuable than me. That is very interesting. <laughs> you're more valuable than me, and you're more valuable than me, and you're more power, powerful than me, and you're more powerful than me, and I am pathetic. That is very funny. <laughs> is it true? Hmm. 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 Is it true? Maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. I'm just weak. I can't do anything. But this is where that making, if you don't make it significant that you're choosing that, if you don't make it significant, it's not significant. Okay, so I'm choosing this. I'm choosing this because I'm choosing this because I'm choosing this. I choose to make everybody more powerful, valuable than me. Okay, fine. I'm going to choose it again and just see what happens. And now I'm going to choose it again and see what happens. And I'm choosing it again and I'm choosing it again. You will start to see something different. Something different will be available to you when you begin to facilitate yourself like that in a different way. So you, know, you don't have a problem, really. None of us really have a problem. What we, what we are doing is we're doing significance about things that we think should be different. For what reason do they need to be different? Because they're wrong? Because we're wrong? Because why? You want more money for what reason? You want a bigger, greater life? Who cares? Why? So what? It's not the right thing to choose. It's not the wrong thing to choose. It's just a choice. So do you actually have a small life problem? Or do you, is there something else that's true? And if you didn't make the thing significant, if it was something you could play with, if you could play with, I'll, I'll give you a quick story from my, from my life. So uh, let's see. So I just moved into a brand new house <laughs> in the last two weeks and I had to, I, I needed furniture. So I got to buy a whole new kitchen, couches, a bed and all the things. I was not expecting that expense at this time. <laughs> and that money was slated for something else. I was going to go to Australia with that money. Now, I am still going to Australia. And I realized at the moment that I was moving into this place that this was double what I had created for. And I had the money in the moment to, to have it, which was really great. So I was like, okay, so I could... I have so many choices here. One, I could make this a problem or I could just be grateful. I could just be grateful that I had actually created the money I thought I was creating for one thing and I actually used it for something else, which I was completely grateful for. Um, I could not go to Australia. I could get on a payment plan for Australia. I could, I just looked at all my choices. What would I like to choose? I could create my face off and create the money to go. And I was like, well, that actually sounds like more fun. Like, so I, I, I put this into a game for myself and I, you know, I did my numbers. So we talk about when you want to create money for something, get your numbers together. Like, what is it you actually require to live every month? What do you require to create? Get clear. So I got clear and I was like, okay, so that's over like $20,000 for everything that I'd like to have in the next little bit. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to play the, what would it take for $20,000 to show up with ease game with myself? <laughs> And it just got fun. Like, and money started showing up like in the next two days. Like it just started showing up. People pinged me for private sessions. Uh, other things just started showing up. $20,000, did it show up in my hand right away? No. But I don't have any doubt about that $20,000 is showing up. But I don't know when. I didn't put time into the equation. But I, but I knew that if I made it serious, that if I made it significant, um, that it, I would kill it. 
So I made it into a game. So how serious have you made what it is you'd like to have as your life? How many projections and expectations of what you think should be are you using to separate, judge, and reject you and your life and the energy that you would like your life to be? And everything that is, will you destroy and create all that? All right, wrong, good, bad, pod, online, shirts, boys, and beyonds. So if I don't have any projections and expectations that this money show up when it shows up, how it shows up, and it can just show up, and I can just keep creating because I like to create, you know, then, then I get to enjoy my life, the universe gets to support me, and I get to have money, all of it. If instead I need to decide and delineate a path, how it shows up and judge when it doesn't show up and project and expect that it should show up, then I get to be unhappy and I get to separate, judge, and reject me. That's trifecta, <laughs> right? So I was like, well, what's the funner way to be? What, what's more fun than projecting and expecting and separating and judging and rejecting me? That hasn't been that fun. I'm not really having that much fun with that anymore. Like, meh. Uh, maybe, maybe playing. <laughs> But this is serious. This is money. <laughs> this is serious. This is my classes. You don't understand. Maybe I don't understand. Or maybe I totally get it. And everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. And nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. And everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. And nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. And everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. And nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. And everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. And nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. Which, by the way, is another epic tool of access consciousness. When you can't seem to unwind yourself from head tripping, from ruminating, from projecting and expecting, from all the things that keep you locked into one fixed point of view, that is an epic tool to use to yourself that will just start to unravel everywhere you're sticking yourself. You can say that about your parents, Leah. Everything's the opposite of what it appears to be, and nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be, and everything's the opposite of what it appears to be, and nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be, and everything's the opposite of what it appears to be, and nothing's the opposite of what it appears to be. And see, look what it does, she's smiling. You guys probably can't see her face. <laughs> she, <laughs> she couldn't get herself to smile today. So I got a photo that was like, I'm like, can we, can I get a smiling photo for, her? no, no smiling. That's what projecting and expecting does, creates no smiling. Guess what doesn't attract money? No smiling. So we're not talking about thinking positive. We're actually talking about what does it take to create a different space for you to be in? That's what we're talking about. What, what does it take? What choices do you get to make to create a different space for you to be in? One of the th conversations in the How to Become Money workbook, how to become money. How do you become money, for fuck's sakes, right? It really should be called How Do You Become Anything You Want in Life <laughs> workbook. <laughs> We use money because that's what gets people to at least buy it. They don't actually open it, but they buy it. And then two years later, after it's sat on their nightstand for two years and they've dusted it, they open it. But the coolest thing about this workbook is it starts to get you to look at all these weird ass, strange, microscopic points of view that you have about what money means to you. What does it look like? What does it taste like? How does it feel? Um, and so it begins to like de-solidify basically this intense foundation of solidity that we're trying to create from. And the crazy thing is that we are energetic beings, energy, energy, energy moves. It's free flowing. You can have it, you can pull it, you can push it, you can do all kinds of things with it just by request. That's how difficult energy is. And we are energetic beings. That's the truth of us. If, you, if you're not sure about that, I invite you to go outside your body, close your eyes, go outside your body, and then just keep going out until you can stop when you find the outside edges of you. You may discover you have no edges, which means you are infinite. You are energy unlimited. But have you been functioning as energy unlimited? Or have you been functioning as a finite pile of bricks, right? Trying to get your life to work as a finite pile of bricks while you're an energetic being, right? So that's this, this crazy like dichotomous thing that we keep trying to do with all the things. So what I'm talking about is creating a different space for you to be. And that's the whole workbook is like, hey, by the end of the workbook, everybody I've ever taken through that workbook is like melting space. <laughs> Guess what? From there, you can create money. From the solidity of lack, 
from the solidity of need, from the solidity of worry, from the solidity of any other point of view, you cannot create. And that's what we do when we make things significant. It's significant that I don't have money. It's significant that I don't have the relationship that I want. It's significant that my parents are being dumb. It's significant that, I mean, fill in the blank. It's significant that, right? Okay, cool. Well, that's not going to change anytime soon because it's a very big deal. And I can't laugh about it because it's not funny. I'm having a problem. I'm probleming right now, which then gets really funny because it's funny. <laughs> So I'm inviting you to blow your shit out of proportion. Like if you are probleming right now about something, blow it out of proportion, like wildly, wildly blow it out of proportion, really make it into a problem because that will invite you to start to see the humor in it. And the humor is the lightness. That's you. That will actually invite different questions in and different choices to your table. So everywhere I'm making this the most significant thing on the planet, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, online, shorts, boys and beyonds, all the lies I bought about this, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, online, shorts, boys and beyonds is one way. Another way is like, I am going to have the biggest problem anyone has ever seen right now. I am going to be problem queen. I have the biggest problem of them all. And if that doesn't make you laugh, make it bigger. Go dress up or something. Invite friends over, get ice cream, have a party, um, have a problem party, and then see what changes. Because the whole point of any of this stuff, where, where is my problem? I, you know, queen of significance is really what I need. I said once to Stephanie, I was like, I need a choir of angels to sing when things happen because otherwise, I mean, how do you know that they happened? If, if you don't have a choir of angels, how do you know you changed anything? <laughs> so, <laughs> we created the choir of significance. We are the choir of significance and we will sing. It was funny. It changed some things. I watched Mission Impossible last night and got how they have to create this massive problem so they would have the possibility to save the world. Yes. And this is actually exactly what we talk about in foundation of when you've labeled yourself a problem solver, you have to create a problem for you to solve. So how many definitions of you do you have of you as the problem solver? <sighs> and everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy it and create it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all the insurance, boys, beyonds. I was, I've da I dated someone for a while. And it was, he, he insisted on keeping that definition. It was very important to him. But this was the thing. It was very important to him. He's like, well, I'm a problem solver. So this is the way I, and I was like, oh, oh okay. Oh. So I would, he, I would watch him as he created something into a problem so that he could. And I was like, you didn't even, you went all the way over there to make that thing into it. And then you came back over here and you, you didn't even ask me. I wasn't even, and sometimes I, apparently I was included, but I wasn't actually included. He just made it into a problem, then created a solution to it, and then brought it all back to me. And I was like, what? <laughs> this wasn't even a problem in the first place, but thank you. That's crazy, but we do that all the time. So if your money situation wasn't a problem, if it was just something you've created, can you talk about reference points about problems? Uh, reference points are basically just anything in the past that you're using to create your choices now. So how many reference points are you using to create the problems you keep choosing? And everything that is times a godzillion, we destroy it and create all that. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, poc, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Yeah. So I want to leave you with what am I unwilling to perceive, know, be, or receive that would create total clarity and ease with this? Okay. That's something you can begin to run around any situation. What am I unwilling to perceive, know, be, or receive about this that would give me total clarity and ease? Because the only time you can have a problem or create a problem is when you're unwilling to perceive something or know something or be something or receive something. And that's a retraining of that thing that where we want to go do something. We want to do the tools to fix something. There's no actual problem in the first place. There's only something you haven't yet been willing to perceive, know, be, or receive yet. Okay. Ah, it's so good to see your faces. I think we may be doing this on a weekly basis. So 
anyway, thank you so much for your questions and thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you all next week. <laughs> Bye.